Hello. How are you doing? I'm Christine. And since the last time I did a book haul, it, I'm not exaggerating to say I've come into possession of at least 80 more books. <laughs> The last time we did a haul was before May. I wrote a book. It's called Again But Better. Here are a million copies that I haven't had to buy a separate shelf for. It's a rom-com, which is my favorite kind of book. It's a happy maker. Booklist calls it a funny, poignant debut full of life and honest reflection packed with adventures that will charm readers whether they've traveled abroad or not. And Kirkus said, this first person narration is natural and charming. Half wish fulfillment, half cautionary tale. Full of charm. I've had this in the background of my videos a little bit and People have been like, wow, way to buy like 50 copies of your own book. I didn't buy these copies, they're my author copies. Book of the Month YA sent me all five of their Book of the Month September choices to unveil for you today. Before we start that, we gotta talk about the September book explosion of Book of the Month, Frankly in Love by David Yoon. This month we're working with Penguin. He sent me this copy in earlier. He sent me this copy, Frankly in Love with Christine, which was so early when they sent me this copy that I got it in the mail and I was like, wait a minute, is it called Frankly in Love with Christine? <laughs> I legitimately was confused because I was like, wow, the name Christine is barely ever used in novels. <laughs> it's called Frankly in Love, and they did this really cute thing where they personalized a bunch of early arcs. So this is our book explosion September book of the month. I'm so excited because it's a contemporary. It has blue edges, which is insanity. This is David Yoon's debut novel. David Yoon is Nicola Yoon's husband. If you've read The Sun is Also a Star, or Everything, Everything, that's Nicola Yoon. She's fantastic. I have been avoiding the synopsis so hard because I love going into contemporary blind. The back says two friends, one fake dating scheme. What could possibly go wrong? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I love, love, love this book, which miraculously manages to be a love story, a treatise on racism, a peek into adolescence, and a welcome into the Korean American culture all at once. That's from Jody Pico. Book Explosion is an online book club hosted by myself, Katty Tastic, and Jesse from Jesse the Reader. We read stuff together every month and do live shows on the Book Explosion channel where we chat with you, take questions live. Hopefully I'll see you at the live show which is scheduled for October 5th on the Book Explosion channel at 7 p.m. Eastern time. This is not out yet, but it's out very soon, September 10th. Let's open one of the Book of the Month YA boxes. You haven't heard, I'm working with Book of the Month YA. I talked about them in my college advice video. They are a subscription service. They feature five new young adult titles every month. You pick the one that calls out to you, then they send that one out to you in your monthly box. If you use coupon code GROW, you can get your first box at the discounted price of $9.99. They like to feature and support debut authors. Let's see what the feature in this month. Ooh, The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. This is a beautiful cover and a very interesting title. I am intrigued. It sounds like a fantasy and I'm in love with the look. Next we got The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young. This is by the author who wrote the Viking book that's still on my TBR that I'm still excited to read, whose title I can't remember at this moment. Right here. Looks like another story about a badass warrior queen. The Stars in the Blackness Between Them by Janata Petrus. This sounds like it starts out in Trinidad when 16 year old Audrey is sent to live in America with her father because her mom catches her with her secret girlfriend who is the pastor's granddaughter and she's sent to Minneapolis. This sounds really good. Oh, they're also featuring Frankly in Love by David Yoon this month. Our book explosion book of the month. And last in September, they're featuring Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi, who wrote another book that's still on my TBR that I really want to read. The September book of the month YA picks are amazing. You can use the link in the description to sign up and subscribe, or you can even just sign up for the newsletter so you know what they're featuring every month. And the great thing about book of the month YA is that any month, if you don't like any of the titles, you can opt out and skip over that month without penalty. The next book I have to show you is another exciting release that happened this year and that is Nexus by my friends Sasha Alsberg and Lindsay Cummings. This is the finale and sequel to their Zenith duology. I love the new covers that have been instated here. Zenith got a new cover to match and I just really love their new look. This is a sci-fi space opera about kick-ass women, space pirates doing their thing. The next book that I got in the mail from HarperCollins I believe is The Serpent and the Dove. I've been seeing this around a lot. It has a really super cool cover and it 
it was featured in an article that again but better was featured in that epic reads did matching the lyrics on lover to a ya release from 2019 which was the coolest ever and i was so excited if you haven't seen the article it's linked on my twitter which is at x teen mag so the of the dub i think is coming out very soon oh it's blurred by sarah jms a brilliant debut full of everything i love a witch and a witch hunter bound in holy matrimony that sounds like a formula for drama i forget what track they matched the serpent and the dove up with but they matched again but better up with i forgot that you existed <laughs> the next book i have to share with you was sent to me by penguin again who i'm working with this month and that is our book explosion october book of the month the fountains of silence by ruta sapetis ruta sapetis writes beautiful historical fiction novels i don't know if you watched my video with her a couple years back wow was that 2016 where we talked about salt to the sea which i love she's so charismatic and eloquent every word that drops out of her mouth i'm like wow you said that in the perfect way so i can't wait to read another one of her novels this comes out october 1st <gasps> Oh my gosh! It takes place in Madrid, Spain in 1957 during the height of General Francisco Franco's reign, which I'm learning about right now because I'm reading Dan Brown's new book, Origin. They're talking about dictator Francesco Franco, who was a dictator that can be compared to Hitler, but is rarely talked about. Like, I've never heard of him. Th this is what Ruta does. She takes these incidents in history that have been kind of swept under the rug and brings their stories to the forefront. And she does it in such an accessible way. Like, when I thought of historical fiction before reading Ruta Sapetti, I thought of it as being harder to get through, like a slower read. But reading Ruta's writing feels like you're reading a contemporary novel. Like that feeling when you're watching The Marvelous Miss Maisel, where it doesn't feel old, it feels like you're there with them because it's done so well. I am just so glad this is our October book of the month. I hope you join us. If you don't read historical fiction, this is a great way to start reading or to dip your toe in it. The next book I got in the mail a while ago is called Slay by Brittany Morris. It comes out September. Oh, so this is good timing. The bright colors caught my attention, and then I got excited because I saw that the blurb was by Nick Stone, who I love. A book that knocks you off your feet while dropping the kind of knowledge that'll keep you down for the count. So it sounds like the 17-year-old girl, Kira, is one of the only black kids at her school, and at home she's a huge gamer. She's the game developer of a game called Slay. This sounds intense. Kira must preserve her sacred identity and harness what it means to be unapologetically black in a world intimidated by blackness, but can she protect her game without losing herself in the process? The next book I have to share with you today was sent to me by Simon and Schuster, who will be sponsoring our November Book Explosion Book of the Month, and that is Cursed by Frank Miller and Thomas Wheeler. Maybe you've already heard about this book because it's becoming a Netflix series, which is so exciting. This is a fantasy novel that has like an Arthurian Knights of the Round Table feel to it. There's magic and paladins, fae, and our lead character is a young woman who wields a sword meant for the one true king, which is controversial. It looks awesome. I just realized it's written by Thomas Wheeler and the book is illustrated by Frank Miller. There's super cool illustrations in here. Look at this inside. Whoa, it's so smooth. Oh my gosh, Thomas Wheeler was the executive producer and creator of Empire for ABC. And he's written multiple feature films, including the Academy Award nominated Puss in Boots. I'm excited about this. Next book I have to share with you today is a fellow Wednesday books release, and that is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I've heard such amazing things about this. It's a dark gothic fantasy that sounds fascinating. Adrienne Young calls it seductive, dark, and enchanting. Stephanie Garber says this book destroyed me, and I adored it. And Roshni Blurb did a snow-frosted, blood-drenched fairy tale. I really love the look of the cover and this spine. Oh! In the inside wallpaper! A girl, a prince, a monster. Oh! Let them fear. This is so cool. What an amazing naked cover. And interior. This is beautiful. Just wow. The next arc I have to show you is one I'm really excited about. It was sent to me by Penguin. It's one of my most anticipated releases this year, and that is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. I'm definitely gonna be reading this come October when it comes out. It's a vampire novel that takes place in New Orleans. I am so down. In 1872, New Orleans. Oh my gosh. Serial killers and vampire love in New Orleans in 1872. A sultry romance and a decadent thrilling mystery. Master storyteller Renee Adier embarks 
embarks on her most potent fantasy series yet. This sounds amazing, and Renee Adia is amazing. I'm so glad she decided to write this. Next book I got in the mail is The Mera Tidebreaker graphic novel by Danielle Page. Marissa Meyer blurbs it, a riveting new portrayal of the ocean's fiercest princess. I need to learn more about Mera because you really don't get that great of a feel for her in the Aquaman movie. Speaking of the sea, the next book I have is also sea themed. <laughs> and that is Coral by Sarah Ella. This book was sent to me by Harper Collins, who I'm working with. This is a dark mermaid tale that comes out in November. I'm gonna be reading it that month. I've still never read a mermaid story, so I'm pumped. The tagline here is there's more than one way to drown. I think this story delves a lot into mental health issues through this fantastical lens. Coral has always been different from her mermaid sisters in a society where blending in is key. And worse yet, she fears she's been afflicted with the dreaded disease said to be carried by humans, emotions. Taking a new twist on Hans Christian Andersen's beloved yet tragic fairy tale. It sounds like there's another lead. Brooke has nothing left to give. Depression and anxiety have her feeling isolated and forgotten. So Brooke is above the sea. So she's a human in a group therapy home. There's Coral in the mermaid world. I'm looking forward to reading a darker take on The Little Mermaid. I know the original story is dark, but I've never read the original Hans Christian Andersen. I've only seen The Little Mermaid Disney version of the story, which is not my favorite. I still have so many books in this pile. The next book I have is You'd Be Mine, another Wednesday books release. This is another contemporary. I believe it's a love story. Love on the Line, Life on the Open Road. And it's by Erin Hahn. Karen McManus blurbed it. She says, witty and charming with an off the charts, irresistible blend of romance, humor, and characters who steal your heart from page one. Next book I have there is We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Fazal. So my book was the June Barnes & Noble YA book club pick and We Hunt the Flame was the July Barnes & Noble book club pick. This is her debut novel. Kirsten White blurbed it. She called it dazzling and magical. It's a fantasy. A sparkling debut full of mystery and magic. Vivid characters. It's a nice blue inside. I'm naked. It's a nice blue with gold foil. The next book is one I got while I was on book tour back in May from Books Inc. in San Francisco. The Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. This is another contemporary release this year that I really want to read. I love the cover, the colors, the design, everything about it. In the back says, this is a book about two teens who fall in love over cereal, about a boy stuck in a time loop, and the moments that make a life worth reliving. The next book I got is another Wednesday books release. This is not a love scene by S.C. Meagle. The protagonist in this story is a teenager with a disability. Kirkus Reviews calls it a humorous, hearty novel about the realities and fantasies of being a teenager with a disability. Readers will want to zoom in on this own voices story featuring a strong, sexually confident, disabled female character. And the lead character has a passion for filmmaking, which explains why this is not a love scene is called this is not a love scene. Ooh, look at the naked spine. Next. Oh my gosh, I was so excited when I got this in the mail. It's another one of my most anticipated releases, but it doesn't come out until 2020, and that is Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. Adam has been working on this forever. I've just been hearing him talk about it, I feel like, in Twitter and IRL for a very long time, and I'm so excited that it's finally here. Look how pretty it is. Look at this. Look at it! Ah! This is, so this is an art. I literally don't know anything about the plot. I know that it's a fantasy. And I know that it has to do with phoenixes. Two brothers thrown into a war, generations in the making. Between those who were born with power and those who took it. One brother has the power, the other brother wants it. Oh no, one brother is the chosen one. The other brother has to make a choice. Who will live forever and who will die trying? This is Adam's first fantasy novel. Yeah, it's gonna be a fantasy series. Family, love, and loyalty are put to the test when brothers Emil and Brighton are caught up. Magical battle playing out on the streets of New York. Ah, yes, these are some other ones that I've gotten in the mail. I'm not sure what they're about, but they look super cool. First being the Revolution of Bertie Randolph. I love the cover of this. The art is just beautiful. First loves, forbidden romance, rebellion, and family expectations. All themes I very much enjoy. And I also got this in the mail, which seems to be a Stranger Things prequel of sorts. It sounds like it's about Hopper in the year 1977 when he was a detective in New York City. I wonder if this holds any clues to what will happen in the next season. Next two books I have. Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is a fantasy. It's about a sorceress. And the next book I have, I went and bought at Vromans. I was in Pasadena with Juan and we were going by Vromans. So I was like, can we please stop in Vromans? And I went in and got Red, White, and Royal Blue, which everyone's obsessed with by Casey McQuiston. 
Everyone's in love with this love story. It's about a boy who falls in love with a prince, I believe, when his mother became the president of the United States. Wait a minute. The boy is the, the son of the president of the United States and the other one is the prince? What happens when America's first son falls in love with the Prince of Wales? I have to read this. Next, I received this randomly in the mail, White Rose by Kip Wilson. Don't, I have no idea what it's about but it says based on a true story of Nazi resistance. And ever since I read Number of the Stars by Lewis Sadger in fifth grade, anytime I see a story that takes place in that time, I'm intrigued. And I'm like, will this be my next Number of the Stars? Did you guys read Number of the Stars when you were in fifth grade? What a great novel. The next book I bought, I also got this at Romans when I got Red, White, and Royal Blue, is Ghost of the Shadow Under Market, which I still hadn't bought. I bought all the stories except for the last two, which were unavailable via ebook. I thought I was gonna be able to buy them once the book came out, but they wanted you to get the full book and I need the hardcover for my collection anyway. So I bought, I have it. Ghost of the Shadow Under Market, I still have the last two stories left, so I have to read them. These stories have been great. All of these novella compilations just get better and better as you go along. Usually the first story is the least exciting and then it builds. Next, I got Kitty McGarry's new book in the mail, Only a Breath Apart, Would You Dare Defy Destiny. And the last two books I have to share with you today, Defy Me, by Tara Muffy, the latest in the Shatter Me series. I believe there's one more after this. Ooh. And the last book I got today is the soft copy of New Mood because after I finally read Life and Death, I was in a very twilight mood and it bothered me that I still don't have New Moon. Like I don't own New Moon. How can I be the huge twilight fan that I am and not own New Moon? If you haven't heard the story, my original New Moon was lost by Olivia and I never got a new one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the biggest book haul of all dang time from me. Look at this! This fell over four times already. I've had to restack them. I want to hold them for you, but like, by George, I definitely cannot. I do need to do something about a thumbnail. <laughs> no! I can go like this over them, and you can imagine I'm holding them. I'm Christine. Thanks for watching. I make videos every Tuesday. My book is called Again But Better. It is out now. Link in the description below for all of the books I showed you today. Don't forget to check out Book of the Month YA if you haven't yet. Links at the top of the description as well. Use the discount code to get your first month for $9.99. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Death by a thousand paper cuts. This doesn't look cute at all. Ah!